motivational speaker and cosplayer, and yes, I spent six hours making this wig. <laughs> it it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. It looks good. It's it's <laughs> Every step, yes. So what we're going to be doing today is having an interactive presentation on finding the hero in you. I'm assuming you're all here because you're fans of My Hero Academia. Woo! Yes. <laughs> now lots of cosplayers in here too, so fantastic. I love to see all the outfits. You guys are amazing. <laughs> what we're going to talk about today is a few things on what it means to be a hero. Using the show, and we're going to go over some rules to make sure that we all know what we're doing together. If I turn the blinker on. Alright, so first we're going to talk about what is plus ultra. Does anyone know what it means? Yes? Um, it means go higher than expect expectation. Yes, it actually means go beyond. It's Latin, right? Plus <laughs> 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 ultra, go beyond. That's actually why it says it in the show. It's actually a translation. So what we're going to be talking about today is how you can go beyond your limits, how you can learn to be a hero based off these common rules that will help you in any scenario. I have presented this similar type of story, I would say, <laughs> at different conventions. So I do bronies, my little ponies, anyone? <laughs> oh gosh, come on guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes, good. Video games. Yeah. Mad Fest. I'm from Washington, D.C. I love to go to the Mad, uh, it's the music and video game fest, Mad Fest. I do anime, I do comics. I love presenting, so if you like this kind of thing and you want me to present at different conventions, please let me know. Mm -hmm. Plus Ultra is what we're going for here. We want you to go beyond. Take what you learned here today and find the hero in you. Because you all can be heroes. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Alright, good. First off, I want to start by thanking you. I want to thank you all very much for coming for being here, for filling the room, for wanting to see what the heck this Plus Ultra panel is all about. I bet you didn't know it was going to be one of those really corny, cheesy, feel-good panels, right? Motivational <laughs> quotes! That's what I'm all about, yes. So thank you so much for being here, and I really, really do appreciate it. It makes me feel fantastic that I can share what I've learned with you. And again, I want to hear from you as well, so what you can help me to learn as well. We never stop learning. Hence the classroom setting. <laughs> all right. We're going to start with ground rules. I do this in all my panels. I want to make sure everyone here is comfortable. So the first one, yes, there may be spoilers. We're going to the end of the anime in the Japanese version. So if you're a little worried, we're not going to do too much, but there may be. There may be some spoilers. Okay? While I am a pro hero, <laughs> I'm actually not a trained professional. So please, if you need to talk to someone or you're not sure that I'm actually telling the truth, yeah, please, call me out on it. And if you need help, please seek it. There is never any shame in asking for help. Okay? Take turns. This is pretty straightforward. If there is something you want to comment on, I need to see raised hands, or if you're even better, if you've got props, right, you can raise the prop. It's a good way for me to call it out because I see what you're holding. Yep, so we, well, just don't hit the smoke alarm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to take turns. Also, there are no bad ideas. I presented a Pokemon panel, surprise, surprise, an hour ago, and everybody had a different idea of who was the best Pokemon and why they played the game, and guess what? They were all right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So there's no bad ideas. And also, we're all here because we like the show. We're all here for a common reason. So obviously, no bullying, no teasing, no making fun of people. We all have different things. Some of us are very shy. Some of us are very outgoing. Some of us have costumes. Some of us are just in normal clothes. That doesn't mean anyone is better than anyone else. Okay? And yes, please ask it questions. So with that, are there any other rules that you would like to propose so that we can have a fantastic hour together? Yes? You're, you're not going to bother going in for the for the spoilers kind of part. I'm oh, sorry. You're not going to be going into spoilers for manga as well, right? No manga spoilers. Thank you for clarifying. Yes? 
Will you use as many puns as possible, or is that not allowed? I will not be offended by puns. You may be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anything else? I'm just waiting for Tilda to be. Alright. What does it mean to be a hero? I want to hear from you. What does it mean? To be yes. Selfless. Selfless. Love it. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Standing up for others. Standing up for others. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you. Others? Yes. Doing the right. Doing it right? Doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. Absolutely. Yes. You don't necessarily have to be good to be a hero. You just have to do the right thing. <coughs> you don't necessarily have to be good. Now, what do you mean by good? Do you mean like good versus evil or just like good at what you do? Oh. Like that. Yes. Helping your community. Fantastic. Over here. Yes. Okay. Um, I would say to strive for excellence even if it doesn't seem attainable initially. Yes. Okay. In the back. Just keep smiling. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yes. Being a good role model. Being a good role model. Absolutely. Anything else? Hey, you guys are a fantastic class. I honestly don't know why you're here. You've covered pretty much the entire presentation. <laughs> good job, guys. And on the other side, what do we learn from Ida? Heroes must not use their quirks for themselves. Mm. Right? Mm. Don't be selfish. Don't act in anger. Don't use the dark side of the force. <laughs> it's okay to be a great Jedi, but you really don't want to use the hate and the anger. All of those things make you act irresponsibly, like what I did with a certain extremely evil villain. All for one. My first battle with him. I let my emotions get ahead of me, just like Eva did when he was with Stain. And what happened? No, no, it wasn't good. good. That's okay. It wasn't good. Yeah, you need to be level-headed, and whenever you see something that makes you upset, the way to get around this is the psychology we're getting into. Are there any psychology majors here? Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there are, please correct me. But the idea behind it is that when you are upset, the secret to getting through it is to acknowledge that you are upset. To say, I know I'm upset. I'm going to take a step back and think about that before I respond. It's so easy to just spit back, to say something mean, or to do something without thinking about it. I have personally done this myself, but I'm sure you can think of times when you or someone you knew has done something you instantly regretted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the way to try and avoid that is to practice mindfulness, which is thinking instead of reacting. It's hard. It takes years. It took me probably eight years to really get the hang of it. It gets you into your zen. So instead of getting angry, you actually say, ooh, what is it? You all have heard the word trigger? Yes. <laughs> what is it that triggered me? Why am I upset? Is it me or is it them? And most of the time it's you. You know, you're offended by something. You take, you think they're wrong and you're right. Sometimes it's them being mean and bullies, in which case you report that. <laughs> and sometimes it's just something that you are thinking differently and it doesn't even make sense that they are the way they are. They may not realize that it's affecting you this way. By taking that step back, by being mindful, by thinking about it before you act, then you can say, oh, why am I acting this way? Do they understand that this is being hurtful or that this is upsetting me? and talking to people. I know it's hard. <laughs> talking to people. Now, sometimes violence is needed. <laughs> That's also part of being a hero. But what is the important part of being a hero that we learned from Araka? Knowing when to use the violence and when not to. Knowing when to use the violence. Stopping before you kill the bad guys <laughs> and putting them in prison. Same as what I did for all for what. <laughs> all right, any other comments or questions about this? You guys are great. You can be a hero. <laughs> One quote. Debbie said, sometimes I feel like I'm a failure. Like there's no hope for me. But even so, I'm not ever going to give up. Mm. Ever. All the deckers are like, yeah. <laughs> 
It doesn't matter if you feel bad. When you feel like a failure, what are you doing? You're talking to yourself. You're putting yourself down. You're comparing yourself to others. Others. Thinking you're not good enough because somebody else has some amazing number one hero which no one else can attain. <laughs> I want to be a role model, but I don't want people to feel like if they are not as powerful as me, that they are not worth it. Because you are all worth it. Yeah. But what happens when we think about success? If Deck is moving forward, I'm going to show you this video. Oh boy. This is as loud as it gets. I'm using different muscle groups depending on the size and shape of the trash I'm hauling. <laughs> Do any of you have long drives to go home or to work? 
Okay, do you listen to music? Yeah. Does anyone listen to podcasts? Books on tape? Okay, you can listen to educational things instead of just music, and that way you can start learning. Like I have this crazy obsession with actually trying to learn Japanese. Oh, no. Okay, I see some hands. So, you're never going to guess when I first said, I am going to learn Japanese. It was anime. It was anime. <laughs> it was anime over 20 years ago. And every time I'm like, I'm going to learn Japanese. I have the drive. But am I doing it? No. <laughs> I've tried so many things. I have actually paid money to go to a school to learn Japanese, and the homework was so hard, and I was, I can't do math and English, much less in Japanese. When they got the money and counting change, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> because I needed to practice more, and I understood that. I started to acknowledge that my problem with learning it is that I'm not practicing enough. Just like Deku had to do this every day. Multiple things, yes. The same is for what your goals are. I am now making it a goal every morning when I wake up to do Japanese practice. Now, I should be doing it more than once a day, but once a day is a start. You have to make it a habit. Uh, comment here and then you. Over here. I was just going to ask you, is this a huge ad for Audible? <laughs> Audible? Is this yeah. an ad for Audible? <laughs> I actually am doing ads for multiple apps, so yes! <laughs> Audible, books on tape, yes. Audible. I was actually re um, watching a TED video um, not too long ago, and the Okay, hold on. Please tell people what TED is. Uh, TED is um, uh, the science community talking about different opinions and stuff. And, and they're called TED Talks. They're yeah. on YouTube. It's amazing. Yeah. But um, anyway, the woman I was watching it was about learning languages. Um, she said one way she learned German was rereading the Harry Potter series because it's one of her favorite series, but doing it in German. Yes. She didn't know the um words until she was like, okay, this is about where this is going to happen and all that. So using what you like yes. will also help you learn a new language because you already know what's going on yes. so you can relate what you're reading towards what you already know. Putting it in context yeah. and helping. So one of the things that I'm hoping to do soon once I have my basics again, <laughs> I want to get the My Hero Academia Japanese manga because we all know manga is great because it has the little pronunciations of the kanji above it just in case so that if you can't read it you can pronounce it. And if you know how to look it up based on the stroke numbers, you can slowly learn. And I want that to be my context. So great example. Thank you for sharing. Other comments? OK. So that's one success story for Deku. So what does it mean when I say, I am here? You have nothing to fear? Yes, <laughs> uh, Reassurance. Reassurance, yes. And present. I am present in the moment. I've come this far. I want to help. That's what being a hero is about. And you already talked about all these themes that seem to be coming around again. Very well said. When I say I am here, I want people to be reassured. And I want them to be a hero. So we're going to start with my favorite learning module, which is using amazing acronyms. So, to be a hero, first, letter H, have awareness of the challenge. To be a hero, you need to know what the challenge is. Do you want to be stronger? Do you want to learn Japanese? What goal do you have? You have to know that first. And then, as we saw in the video, you need to put in the effort, as I have not done with Japanese. Yes, I'm working on it. And yes, it is shameful, but the fact that I can recognize it, that's something. That's something good. You need to have realistic goals. We'll go through goal setting later on. The idea that you can't go from being a scrawny little limp to the top of that garbage mountain Same. just <laughs> by the hopes and dreams of saying I'm going to be a hero. And you need ongoing commitments. Unwavering, ongoing, you must continue. 
So the first thing, if we look at that video with the HERO acronym, this is the plan. It's not a great plan. They don't like you, Tadeku. Wake up at 4 a.m., have a set meal plan, healthy food, and make sure that you've got your workout, your school, your training, your studying, and uh, unfortunately, if you actually read the real plan, he gets like four hours of sleep a night. That's not good. <laughs> you need to have a healthy amount of sleep. Hopefully, you all got a healthy amount of sleep last night. If not, please go to bed early tonight. <laughs> have a plan. So, what is this? Do we have awareness of a challenge? Yes. Do we have effort? No. Realistic goals minus the sleep problem? Yes. Okay? <clears throat> Ongoing commitment. And another realistic goal, what was the challenge I gave him? All of this trash off the beach. It's physical, it's tactical, it's understood. But every day, you need to break it down into something smaller. So he was going to get that fridge moved. He was going to get those TVs moved. He was going to make, you know, six square feet of progress. If you set smaller goals, that can help as well. Does that make sense? Do you have a question? Or just waving your beautiful fan. I'm waving my beautiful I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so now we talked about the hero plan to become a hero, but first we have to think, and you don't have to share, but I want you to think first about quirks. In the show and in the manga, your quirk is your talent. It's your specific skill, something you were born with. Now, in the show, there are also some kind of crazy magical fantasy things where you can shoot flames and be super strong and have a tongue that catches flies. <laughs> if any of you have those powers, congratulations. <laughs> Talk to me afterwards. <laughs> if not, we are all still born with things that we like, with things that we enjoy, with talents, whether it be art or music, math, Public speaking, writing, maybe you are athletic. So think of this in terms of your real life. What is your real life work? Maybe you're good at gardening or cooking. This is going to be one of those homework assignments, class. Oh. Okay. What is your work? Think about that. If you think about your work and your talents, how can you help to make that? into your goal. I actually enjoy cooking. Perhaps I should get a Japanese cookbook. Yeah, I also enjoy go. <laughs> and then I have to translate the recipes and do Japanese math and convert from metric to American. <laughs> That's what your goal is for. I, I, I plus practice. Ultra. Plus ultra. <laughs> Japanese cooking. So there are ways to apply what you want to do to your work. And the same goes for school, right? So you have to pick a major, you have to get a real life job. And I know a lot of times you're stuck with something you don't want to do, but everything you do every day, you should always try and apply what you enjoy to it. I had to work at Walmart. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is organize. And so I spent a lot of time organizing my size, my color. I had fun with it, even though I had to deal with some obnoxious customers and some people that like to steal stuff, which, oh, those criminals. <laughs> Instead of being frustrated all the time, I focus on the things that I enjoy. And I said, ooh, at 10 o'clock I get to go and clean up the men's jeans. Okay, kind of miserable, but still, something fun, right? In everything you do, try and think about how can I tie this to my work? How can I make it more fun? Do any of you want to share? Yes? My work is friendship. Friendship. <laughs> friendship. So how do you apply that every day? I tell everyone that they matter and I love them. Oh my gosh. You should be up here with me. That's fantastic. <laughs> also, did, and, did you work um, at Walmart during Black Friday? I was a summer hire. Okay, you lucky. Yeah. I actually worked at a bookstore during Black Friday. Me too. The bookstores are fantastic, by the way. They should never go away. I spent years in the Walmart. Yeah, it's tough. And the thing is, why is that? Because people think about themselves. We go back to that again, right? So when we're upset at them, it's literally because they don't take the time to step back and go, we're all here together. 
we all want the deal. Why don't we actually like cooperate instead of trying to kill each other? Because that's just mm -hmm. terrifying. Yes. Okay. I saw you. And then you. And then next. Okay. Socializing, and you're a nurse, so you're able to help people in difficult situations to at least get a smile on their face. You're already a hero. Mm -hmm. That is so heroic. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you don't have one? What do you do if you don't have one? That's when you have to think about yourself. That's the word is introspection, right? There, are, obviously, you're here. You have uh, interest in comics. Yeah, that's something. I have literally. This is so so funny. Dragon Ball Z, back in the 90s. Sure. Big thing. I'm in school, I had to take an economics class. I rewrote the whole textbooks in a script so that between Goku and Krillin and Piccolo talking about economics. <laughs> it was the only way I could pass that class. So maybe you apply your interests to something that's less interesting. If you guys had an economics my Hero Academia Tumblr, would you go and read it just for the lols? Yeah. Would you read it to actually learn about economics? Yeah. Maybe. So, there's no easy answer. But the first thing you have to do is take time, again, one more, and think about it. What is it that I, what is it that I like? What, what is it that I'm good at? And you're definitely good at something, maybe multiple things. So that's for you to find out. Alright? Yes? So this goes back to his, what if you don't have a part? What we learned from the movie, if any of you have seen the My Hero movie, you may not have a quirk, but there is something special about you that yes. you can grow and expand. Yes. You Even just if you need don't. to figure it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's well said, thank you. You had a comment? Do you still have that economics that you rewrote? I could probably find it somewhere. I had to do multiple colors for each of the characters, too, because I'm one of those OCD people that likes lots of different colors. Uh, <laughs> I wrote it on lined paper, so it's probably somewhere in the giant archive. But yes, <laughs> it was so. It was so bad. <laughs> okay, there and then there. Yes. Um, are you ever with, like one general question about the show? Okay, please. Um, so is All Might's body really bad, like stick, or is he an actual beast thing? So that's actually we're gonna get into that later. So hold that question. The question was, is muscle form his true form? The short answer is no. He's flexing. He's swole. He's swole. <laughs> swole. 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 Alright, and then there was a question up here. Um, well, I was, my comment was about uh, what your perk is and stuff, and this kind of relates to what you were talking with Jeff, and with you learning Japanese. I'm work, I like to draw and stuff, and I'm working on drawing better, because I also like animation, and that's yeah. what I want my career to be, yes. but I also want it to mean something so I can express how to help others through that. Yeah, that's great. So. Yeah, thank you. So the idea is, yes, not everyone's going to get their dream job of being a comic book animator or a voice actor, but that doesn't mean that you can't use it in other ways. I am not a professional motivational speaker or a professional weightlifter. However, I still go to the gym every day and I'm actually learning that one of the things that I like about presenting, I can do it at conventions and, this is so cool, I started to get into yoga to relax, right? Stress, I found that was a good way to zen out, right? Yeah, a little bit of like, <laughs> posing. And then I found out that not only do I enjoy that, but I enjoy plus ultra going beyond learning new poses. And one way to do that is, again, just like this, teaching. So I want to teach yoga because then I can present, talk about my ideas, help other people. It's something to do on the side that still applies my personal work to help others. Awesome. Thank you guys for sharing. This is great. So how do we get there? We talked about our works. We've talked about the acronym Be a Hero. If we have a goal, once you think about what your work is and what you want to do, there's this phrase called, start with the end in mind. It's from a book you may have heard, it's called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. It was written in 1989. One of the most famous adulting books out there. It's about, if you want to be successful, you need to understand yourself. 
it's not about making money on the stock market or becoming a really mean manager to get people to do your will. It's about thinking about yourself and what your personal goals are. <coughs> when you have your pork and you know what you use it for, you can think about what you want to do. And this is one of those life questions. Why am I here? What is my purpose? I'm not going to get into that. It's a personal question, but I'll tell you mine. My purpose, at first, I had this, because I make a, a giant list, and you kind of go through it and you, you try to put them all together. So yes, I like to teach, I like to help others out. I want people to feel like they're not alone. I want you to accept yourself. I want you to be able to stand up to bullying, to understand that other people have been there too, and that we can't let these things continue. I could say that my quirk is motivational speaking, but my personal mantra, my personal goal, when I went through it all, I finally got it down to two words. I empower. I empower people in yoga to do another pose. I'm empowering myself to learn Japanese. Great, great. Take time to think about these things. It will take time. This took me about a year. Seven habits of highly effective people. One of the ways to do that. So when you think about it, one of the habits, it's about halfway through the book, is start with the end in mind. If I know that I empower people, what can I do with that? If I want to come and present at Toracon, what do I have to do? And the answer is, when in doubt, chart it out. Who likes making lists? Oh my gosh, you guys are fantastic. <laughs> like more than a half of the people here. Who lists are awesome. <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> Who forgets Even All Might likes to make lists. You have to have a goal. Has anyone talked about the theory of goal setting before? Okay, so we're going to go through the SMART method. There are multiple methods for goal setting, but this is the one that worked for Deku, this is the one that has worked for me, and this is the one that has worked for millions of people all around the world. To be smart about your goals, first, you need a specific task. Clean up all the garbage, just pretty specific. Measurable? Yes, obviously it's that starts with each. Achievable. He was pretty weak in the beginning, but through the training as well, he was able to get to the point where, yes, it was on the day of the exam, nonetheless. Woo! Cutting it close. Was that realistic? That was getting a plus ultra challenge. And he still made it. Sometimes it's okay to be a little unrealistic, and if you miss the goal, it's okay. As long as you set a new goal and think about why you didn't reach the first goal. Why did I not learn Japanese? Because I didn't know. I didn't know how to do math well enough because I didn't spend enough time studying. I can't just do it once a day. I need to practice writing, reading, speaking. It's a lot of work and I need to commit. So instead of doing other things like social media, I'm turning those apps off and I'm turning on my Japanese apps. Yes. Time-based. What's this time-based? Ten months. Absolutely, ten months. Why do you think it's that? So this guy says, I can't fit video games into my schedule. I gotta sleep, I gotta work, I gotta eat. Yes, those are the most important things, guys. And also take your meds. <laughs> Good. Can I put it in by taking out sleep? What happens when you do that? I see unicorns. Short term gain. Long term suffering. Pain! I like that rhyme. Oh my gosh. It's not funny, but that's good. I like it. All right. Time? Yes. Obviously, we only have 24 hours a day. We don't have magical time travel, unfortunately, unless that is your quirk. Again, talk to me later. <laughs> Prioritization. This is the one that kills me. It's the one that kills a lot of folks. When you have so many things to do, including chores, your job, you gotta make money. Like, when do you have time to do something for yourself? Make time. Make time. Sometimes it's by taking sleep, but sometimes it's by doing things that you may not be. Like, what about putting off 
taking out the trash all day, when literally you can just do it now and then it won't be weighing on you the rest of the day. Those are the kind of things I'm talking about. Yes? Um, so it's kind of in this uh, topic. I have, I had a history teacher who I pretty love her. She had this example of putting those big rocks first. So she literally got a jar. Yep. She got these big rocks. So which was like work, all this stuff. And she put them in the jar and then she got like all the little rocks that like, um, stuff you like to do. And she managed to put it all in there. So Yes. So that was kind of like a good business uh, visualization of that. Right. And the other side is if you fill a jar with small rocks and then you try to put the big ones in, they don't fit anymore. So you have to take and do the basics first and then you will still have time if you prioritize correctly. <coughs> it's tough. This is tough adulting stuff here. I don't expect you all to be masters and in fact you can say that the majority of all adults are not good <laughs> at prioritization. Right? And you need to have time for self-care. I will be honest, after I presented yesterday, I went home and I took a love of all of that. <laughs> oh my bad, Dub. Yes, okay. <laughs> Moving on, yes. Yeah. Breathe. Relax. Find something that you can do just to bring yourself back to yourself. Just like we said before, if somebody makes you upset, like staying, think about how can you get yourself back to your happy place? How can you get to your zen? How can you find yourself again? And breathing is actually what I do as well. Yes? Have you heard the expression, swallowing the frog? Swallowing the frog, please, tell me. So uh, what you do is, if you have like uh, something stressful or, or something major that you have to do, instead of cleaning it off less, yep. do that first. Right? Swallow the frog first, and then anything else would be powerful. Yes, swallowing the frog is doing the bad thing first, and this is where I've been focusing on the last year. I have been saying all those emails that I hate replying to, I'm going to reply to them first. Yes. All those things that I've been putting off, those little things that I can get done fast like taking out the trash, right? Swallow the frog, I like that phrase. And then do that thing. It's your brain can be your worst enemy sometimes, right? If it even seems like the least bit not fun, you're not going to do it. But if you do it, one of the interesting things about completing something is that it releases those feel-good chemicals in your brain. It says, oh, yeah, I got this done. It feels amazing. The high you get when you finish something, like, on top of that, garbage mountain! <laughs> you couldn't feel anything else in the world for that moment. You want to get to that point in your life, too. And so by making small goals, you'll feel that more often. So when you say, and I'll tell you this right now, the one that you should celebrate first is getting out of the bed in the morning. It's hard sometimes. That's your number one achievement. Number two, eat. Yes? I actually have something to say. This is going to be cheesy, but I'm getting married in June. Okay. Ooh, congratulations. Okay. Okay, so I have to learn uh, two semesters worth of German to be able to live in Germany. So my goal is to learn as much German as possible. Yes. And it's getting, it's getting hard, but I'm trying to push myself to get there eventually. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can learn German. Plus ultra. Plus ultra. Yeah. yeah. start doing competitions. <laughs> How fun. And I'm really, really excited to start doing it. I have friends who are gonna start helping me train more often. Um, like instead of like once a week, we're doing like two, three times a week. So it's something that I'm very, very excited to do. Yeah, so is is the reason that you're doing it more so that you have a goal to get to the competition or do you have something else as the end goal? My goal I think is to my, I think my short like, term goal is to get to the competition, but like long term, I want to do more cross the country, I think. Oh, I'd love to be able to do that. I just want to get really, really into it because I do judo. Yeah. So I want to get really dive into the judo community and like, I don't know, I really want to do it. Yeah, part of the community. Plus culture. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Alright, so, well, I think there's a couple more here. Yeah, we talked about excuses, right? 
Yeah. Validate my homework. Here's another one, guys. This is what happened earlier. Technology failures. So, sometimes you can't help it, right? Sometimes you can't help it. It sucks. When things are bad, you're allowed to feel bad for a little while, but then you have to move on. Try to figure out what went wrong and see if you can avoid it in the future. One of my favorite phrases, save early, save often. <laughs> it's so bad when things don't save and then you're like, where did it go? When you're doing art. Oh, oh yeah. Ha, I guess so lots of you have lost projects because it's, it didn't save or something went wrong. Yes. Or, or the computer had a crash. Photos. It's so frustrating. Or oh, I know, right? It's like, why? Why can't we have that? lost it, all of your game, when you don't save it. All your games! Oh, and you're no. now you're 45 minutes behind where you were before. Yes. The heart crushing failure of technology. <laughs> yes. So those obstacles, you can't get around, but if, if you can, it's always good to have backups. Actually, right now, external hard drives are so dirt cheap, it's amazing. Like, if you yes. save up, a few months worth, you can have enough to buy like a terabyte for 50 bucks. When you get Black Friday, here's another thing, right? So you save up and then you buy stuff when it's on sale. I have another whole thing about adulting and couponing and how amazing it is to not spend money. That's a skill too. That's a quirk, saving money, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, fear. Okay, what happens if you do it and what happens if you don't? And I want to spend a little bit of time on this. I can't versus I won't. When you say, I can't, you are saying, I am unable, unable to do that thing. I am not strong enough to do that task. If you say, I won't, you are saying, I consciously choose not to. These are words that are often intermingled, but they mean such different things. If you say, I won't do it, if you say, I won't. You are saying, I choose not to. Yes? Do we have to read what you're doing on the show? Oh, thank yeah, you. I have to read too. Thank you so like you're much. the greatest. Yes, I have a video, again, on um, Lift Wing Designs online, so. Would it be on YouTube? Your YouTube channel? Like, yes, Lift Wing Designs. Thank you. Put it on the whiteboard. I will pass out cards. How about that? Ooh. Ooh. It's like passing back homework. <laughs> <laughs> mindset. If you say, I'm 
I'm not good enough. I, I'm not going to be able to do this. You know, I suck. I'm not good with people. I don't know how I'm going to be able to present to all of you guys. You're all so amazing already. Like, I'm just nothing. It's not healthy, and it's not right. And instead, you have to walk with a presence and say to yourself, I can do this. Because you can be a hero, right? Yeah. Yes. That's an affirmation. I can do this. You can be a hero. Say it to yourself. Believe it. Even though it's corny, over time, if you continue to do that, your mind will start believing yourself too. If you want to be the number one hero, you have to focus on that goal. Now here's the other advertising we talked about earlier, apps, right? Mm -hmm. There are also other ways if you don't have any friends, which I'm sorry, please meet people. Like there are so many people here with the same ideas, like talk to each other, get your name, get your online handles and also get these cool apps. So we've got apps like Duolingo for Languages, Habitica, Keep, Fitness Pals, and then things like Inktober, where the entire month of October, everyone draws one thing based on a certain theme every day. We've got NaNoWriMo, which is in the month of November, everyone writes a novel about how do you get there? 2,500 words a day. That's easy. And then you get to a 50,000 page novel at the end. And if you do something like that, and if you want to do something like that. Ooh. So you can always search online. There's like artist training grounds that do doodles every day. Obviously there are classes that you can take. Find communities, find apps, find things that you can also do to get yourself to that goal, whatever that goal is. All right. Here's an amazing quote by one of the best. One of my heroes, Bruce Lee. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. The same thing, basically that same thing as you know, where it's like all you need to know is one throw, and you practice it like a million times, and you can use that at any point. Yep. You just need to know one. If you are an expert at one thing, it can help you. It's better to focus on your goal than to try and do 30 other things as well. And that goes back to prioritization. What is the one that you want to do? Or maybe there's two or three, but the idea is you have to practice. And a thorny catchphrase for this one is don't quit, commit. Make a promise to yourself. You are the most important person. It's selfish, but it's true. You have your life to live, and you have your work to share with everyone else. To be a hero, you need to commit to yourself before you can commit to those that you will help. And if you do fail, success is measured by how you rise after you fall. A famous speaker, Darren LaCroix, said, If you fail and fall on your face, and you get up again, you will still be further than when you first started. That's what it means. Yes? Jack of all trades, please. Okay. Jack of all trades, master of none. Yep. So it's the same thing. You can do so many things. You don't have a master of none. Right. So the phrase jack of all trades, master of none means that if you do everything, you still won't be the best at anything. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Yes? And Edison, uh, when he was making the light bulb, he said, uh, I found a thousand ways of how not to make a light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a, always failure. And actually, some of the best inventions are made because you try to do something and it turns out it wasn't for that particular thing, but it was useful some other way. Take them as learning experiences. Yes? I just want to say that thing, uh, the maker of 3M Scotch Tape, they made the sticky note glue because they were trying to make the world's strongest glue and made the exact opposite <laughs> of that. And they made a low tack adhesive that doesn't leave residue. And that's how we have sticky notes. I love sticky notes too. So that was a failure that turned out to be fantastic. Yeah. So never take those as only bad. Take it as a learning. Yes. Um, some of the most iconic uh, scenes in movies, like for example in Harry Potter, when uh, Ron and Harry 
drink the poly juice and go in Malfoy goes, I didn't know you could read. That's actually improv. Oh. He literally just off the top of his rim. And yet it's still a funny scene that people remember. It's an iconic scene. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Or like in the Fast and the Furious movies, uh, you better hide that baby oil. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, so when we do that, the other thing I want to mention is, yes, you've got these great goals, and yes, it feels good to get to them, but also, it's good to get some rewards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, be humble. Thanks, guys. Thank you. One way to do that for me, these are all the badges I have from all the conventions I'm on to. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, Instead of just flying <laughs> things away, if you have something that makes you proud, whether it's a trophy or just a badge, just a pin. If you display them, this is hung on my wall, it's literally about six foot long, and I keep adding more ribbons to add more badges, so I'm gonna put this one on there afterwards. Have something to be proud of. Have a, what we call a me wall, mm -hmm. where you put things up there to motivate yourself. Get those rewards, whether it's a physical medal, or just something you did. If you have a photo of your costume that looks cool, print it out. I know it costs a little money, but what are you going to do with a digital photo? Print it out! Be mm -hmm. proud of yourself! Yes! So, I understand this quite well. I am a manager at McDonald's after being there for about seven years now. Okay. And when I became a manager, the first thing they let you do is choose one item out of a uh, catalog. I personally chose a fedora that I love. <laughs> and the reason why I chose it is I was able to keep the pins that we received through our train. Yeah. And I put all those pins on there, and every time a friend of mine gives me a pin, I put it on because everybody that I know works with me. Yeah. And if I have that hat on, I'm going to have a good day. It's like my good luck charm. Aww. But it's also a way of me to remember I've been through almost everything in that store. You have made it so far. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Yes, one more comment. I've also seen a picture on Facebook where it's, um, it wasn't anyone I knew, but they were like, it was the name tag for a fast food place, and it's like a crew worker, manager, like general manager, and then on the side it had RN, LPN, and the rest of it. It's like just because you have to start somewhere you don't like doesn't mean that you have to stay there forever. You can use that yes. to go to your actual goal. Yes. So think about how can you help yourself. Be proud. Be proud of how far you've come. Again, today. How much further have you gone than where you were yesterday? So we only have a couple minutes left, so I'm going to show you one more thing. Oh, we have to talk about this one. Um, right? Oh, good. We're actually, we only actually missed a couple slides. This is fantastic. Good timing, guys. So smiling. There's actually psychology of smiling. When you smile, even if you Faking it, fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> Smiling literally because we're animals, it triggers the chemicals that make you feel like you're happy even if you're not. It is scientifically proven that in Psychology Today, it says it activates neural messaging for health and happiness. It releases neuropeptides that work off stress. It creates dopamine and endorphins, yes, and serotonin, all of which are released when you smile. Um, at a bartending class, I took, they said that when you look at somebody and they smile, it kind of triggers a in your brain that you're, you're a little bit happier now yeah. because you see it from somebody else. Yeah. And that to, even if you're alone, look in the mirror and smile at your reflection because you'll get that little boost and start coming. Perfect. So it is secret, and that is why it makes you so much stronger. And as you also mentioned, you're not alone. Sometimes you can feel really bad. Sometimes you feel like you're the only person, but trust me, you're never alone. As I mentioned before, you can be a hero. You can do this. You have other people that you can share with, and if you need help, you can seek help, and there's no shame ever in that. So, oh my gosh, power poses I didn't talk about. Power poses if you actually stand this way it does the same thing as smiling. It makes you feel so much better. Unfortunately, you guys have been so fantastic that we've now gotten to the end of our program where I must bid you farewell.
それでは今後とも僕のヒーローアカデミアをよろしくお願いいたします